Is it getting too hard to harvest your fruit because they're way out of reach? I need a fruit picker or a ladder to harvest most things around here these days. But it doesn't have to be that way. Are you interested in learning how to keep your fruit trees smaller so that you could harvest your fruit a lot easier? I've got a little bit of pruning to do in my food forest today, so why don't I bring you along and show you a few tips along the way. A lot of people get a little anxious when it comes to pruning their fruit trees. You've probably hesitated to prune a tree because you didn't want to kill it. I get those feelings sometimes too, but it's a lot easier than you might think. The first thing you're going to need are the right tools. A pair of hand pruners, some loppers, a pruning saw or two for larger branches, and maybe even a small chainsaw. I was recently approached by Natiti, a startup company producing battery powered tools for the home and garden. And they gave me this pruning chainsaw, which I'm pretty excited to try out today. I'll let you know how I like it a little bit later on in the video. I also added a tool list with links to purchase them down below in the description. Now that we have our tools together, it's time to observe what we're gonna cut. I like to take a moment and take in the big picture. From this panned out view, we can observe what shape we want our trees to take where we want growth and where we do not. Then we can pan in and look at each plant more individually. Let's start with this citrus tree. I've got my shape in mind, so let's start there. I'm gonna cut off a few branches with what they call a heading cut. All it really is, is cutting a branch back to a bud, not far from the terminal end of the branch. It encourages a lot of re-sprouting where the cut was made, and these heading cuts can actually help encourage more fruiting in plants such as mango, longons, and lychees. Make sure that each cut is made with an angle when you make them. This helps shed water off and helps get rid of unwanted disease. Then I like to look for sick or crossing branches and clear those out. Okay, that's all this tree needs. Plus it's still fruiting, so I don't want to cut off too much. Let's go head on over to the Suriname cherry. This guy is huge. It's one of the biggest Suriname cherries I've seen in a while. And it fruits a lot. Except the only problem is the fruits are so small that you can't use a fruit picker to harvest them. They have to be harvested by hand. And you see, if you allow a fruit tree to get too big like this one, it begins to shade out the lower canopy of the tree, leading to flowers and fruit towards the top of the tree and a food desert down in the bottom layers of the tree. Now that's what's happening with this Suriname cherry. No fruits down low and everything up high, making it impossible to harvest, especially since I give this job to the kids mostly. So let's change that. I'm going to start with thinning cuts. This is when we cut a branch back to where it started. This will retain the shape of the plant more because there will be less regrowth than a heading cut. As we make our cuts, it's important to consider how the trees heal from such wounds. Pruning is like plant surgery. They need to heal properly so they don't get a disease. Do not cut all the way back to the trunk of the plant, but leave a collar instead. This collar will callus over and seal the wound, closing off any entrance pathogens may find for killing off our plants. Likewise, you do not want to be leaving too much of a stub because that will rot out and invite disease. And some people out there like to paint the pruning wounds that they make, but there have been scientific studies done that show that actually invites more disease. So it's better to let your plants heal naturally. And always remember that we should never prune more than one third of any one fruit tree during a single season. More pruning may stress a tree and perhaps even cause it to die. Okay, we're done with this tree. Let's go move on to something big, shall we? How about this ice cream bean between this mountain apple, which is getting way too big, and this ulu? Whatever we cut off the ice cream bean tree will create a nitrogen-rich fertilizer that can feed the ulu or the mountain apple that's just sitting right beside it. That's what I love about intermixing nitrogen-fixing species with my fruit trees. Cutting larger diameter branches requires a little extra care so we don't damage the tree. I like to employ what is called the three-part cut. First, you make an undercut on the bottom of the branch, closer towards the trunk of the tree. Then cut all the way through the branch, about an inch away from the undercut, towards the leafy end of the branch. This will help eliminate the chance of some of the bark ripping away at the rest of the branch when you cut it. Now you can cut it all the way back to the trunk, but make sure you leave a branch collar. Now I'm really starting to like this tool by Nautiti. At first glance, I didn't think much of it, but while using it the past couple hours here, I'm pretty impressed. It has cut through some really large branches. This battery is the only battery I've used so far. I haven't had to recharge it yet. It's pretty lightweight and quiet. It's a lot nicer than having to bring a chainsaw out into the yard. Now I got a little bit more pruning that I have to do, so I'm gonna to continue to put it through the ringer, 
So I'll update you in a future video exactly what I think about this tool once I get to know it a little bit better. Now check out this ulu tree. Branches are broken on this tree and it caused pretty severe damage. I should have pruned it back to cut it all out, but I couldn't bring myself to do it at the time. And now I have a lot of rotting and disease hurting my precious ulu. That's what happens when you neglect broken branches or you rip the bark when you make cuts or you cut too far into a branch without leaving a collar. When this tree is done fruiting, it's gonna get a big pruning. The same with these avocados back here. I'm gonna wait till spring to prune these trees because they won't be fruiting anymore. But these avocados I wanna cut down completely and do a stump graft off them. Right now the fruit pretty much sucks coming off these trees, but you can salvage them by stump grafting on a shoot from a good variety of avocado onto the stump of a poor variety. But that's the subject for another video that'll be really soon. And when it does, I'll add a link to it right here. Now, if your site's not as old as mine and your fruit trees are still little babies, there's still pruning that you should be doing. This is a great time to train your trees to do what you want before they get out of control like some of mine. This citrus can use a little fruit thinning and a few heading off cuts to encourage more branching. I like to cut the tops off young ulus to encourage more bushing. This rambutan has too much weight on one side and needs to be balanced. You can see here I'm cutting some of the big branches on one side so they can counterbalance to the other side as it grows up. This young avocado can be topped and kept at my height so I can harvest the fruits easily without having to break out a ladder or a fruit picker. And instead of letting nitrogen fixers get as large as I have at my place, you can prune them monthly to keep plants nearby mulched and keep the size of the nitrogen fixing plant in check at the same time. And always remember to sanitize your tools before moving on to different trees. What about trees that don't require much pruning? Are there any? Of course there are. Papaya, mac nuts, soursops, those are a few fruit trees that come to mind that don't require much pruning. In fact, you don't really have to do much pruning at all. You can follow a method that Mark Shepard, a popular permaculturist from the Midwest came up with. He calls it the stun method for growing plants. Sheer, utter, and total neglect. Plant more than you ordinarily would and forget about it. Whatever grows, grows, and what doesn't, doesn't. I like that strategy, but it works better for larger property. Since I live on a small property, I prune. That way I can harvest the fruit easier and I can fit more fruit trees into a smaller space. Woo! Look at this place. It looks so much different. Personally, I hate how my garden looks after it's pruned. It just looks kind of dead. Where's all the green growth, all the vigor? Oh yeah, that's right. I live in the tropics. It'll all grow back in a month or two. How do you make sure that they grow back quick and healthy? You need to check out this video that shares three tips on how to make your fruit trees grow faster. Some of them are so easy, you'll wonder why you haven't been using them all along.